All right, so we have that equation right here, which is a differential equation. So look, every time you have this, more than likely, you're always gonna end up with this. And I'm just telling you this now because if you're in a test, I don't even bother to try to figure out what everything is. I just know that this is what it's gonna end up being. Okay, so a number one, this is a 79 or a, they're asking you to, where am I? All right, you'll find this. So we're asking, we're asked to find C and K. Okay, and I actually have to read the problem. Okay, that one's not that big of a deal, but. Okay, so I guess here's a question for you. You, you. you want me to start, do you guys start from here and get to this, or do you start from here and just moved on? I kind of started from like there. From here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Maverick, same. Okay. All right. So if we start off with that, okay, notice that it says that the consumption doubles every five years. So if I start off with this, uh, I keep putting C. S of T. C is basically where you, your starting point and then 12 because it doubles every five years is gonna be your ending point. Now, I'm gonna replace this with a five and then basically I'm just gonna solve for K. All right, so this is gonna be two if I divide both sides by six. And then I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides. I'll write it as 5K here. If I divide both sides by five, then this is what I get. Okay, and I think a lot of, most of you pretty much got that, so. Oh, right, it's gonna be now. On B says find the average rate of consum consumption, right? So I'm gonna actually just write very quickly what it's asking. Find average rate of consumption. Okay, here's the key word right there, average rate. Okay, the word average, you, should, you guys should know what that means, okay? Um, you guys remember what that means? Okay, so here's the deal. When, every time you see the word average, what I'm talking about is this formula. And I'm gonna write the generic formula that you guys should hopefully remember. So that's what the average, that's how you find the average rate of consumption now. Before I do that, now this next part I'm about to show you, you may or may not want to do it. It's fine if you don't, but essentially what I have here is the equation that I found from A. Where K was the natural log of two over five. Okay, so you guys should have this is like the answer for A, right? I just plugged in all the other variables. So now what I have to do is that what I just found here is the consumption. This will give me the consumption at any time, right? So if I plug in some time, it will tell me how much is being consumed at that specific time. I have to find the average rate of consumption, all right? I'm gonna have to integrate. Oh gosh. Okay. And I'm sorry, let me let me rephrase that. This is actually, uh, this is the consumption rate. All right, so I said that wrong the first time. This is the consumption rate. Now, 
when I integrate that, that rate goes away. But when I divide, by the way, this Italian has to tell us this over a 10 year period. Um, when do we start? From 83. All right, notice that your prom says it begins in 1980. All right, so it says starting from 83 to 93. So I'm going to call this 3 and 10. 3 and 13, excuse me. All right, check that out. Make sure that makes sense to you. Okay. Uh, hopefully you see where I got the three and the 13. The three represents the year 1993 and uh, 13 really represents 2003, okay? I just, I'm not gonna write those zeros here because that's gonna give me a super huge answer. Okay, so that, if you put this in at that point, you're gonna use your calculator and this is where you get 19.680 Hold on, my wife handed me an important news. All right, wife, yes, okay, here you go. I have a name. No one knows who you are, Jennifer. All right, so um, anyway, sorry for the direction, guys. I'm trying to be professional here. My wife doesn't <laughs> let me. Uh, anyway, so this right here, uh, what are the units? What do you think? The gallons, six billion gallons. Billion, am I spending billion right? Yes. I don't even know how to spell billion. I'm so far away from that. That's Early. why you're a math teacher. For a year. All right, and this is the important part, okay? Notice that when if I would have just taken the integral, that would have got me just billion billions of gallons, all right, like Maverick said but because I divided this by time, see one over 13 minus three, this is time. Okay, so this right here would give me the gallons and then I divide this by time and that would give me billions of gallons per year. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So it's kind of weird, yeah. you integrate and then you divide again. So this is actually, this has the same units. This has the same units as what um, this would have, okay? that I have exactly the same units, except for this one right here. This one right here, this equation up top, will give you the, um, the consumption rate at a specific time. And this right here is gonna give you the average rate of consumption. Does that make sense? It's almost like talking Wait. about average velocity and instantaneous velocity. Are you with me? Okay. Yes, did you mean to leave off the T in that equation or no? Uh, no, I did not. I did not mean to. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. No, I, I didn't know. Yeah, otherwise, what I had up here, yes, thank you for noticing that. If I would have left that out, then this just would have been a constant. So yeah, I, I should have put that T there. Thank you. Uh, let's go on to C here. Uh, do you subtract? Okay, trapezoidal rule. Is that right? Yeah. So we're basically trying to use the trapezoidal rule. You should ask your English teacher how to spell out like just the very first question we have. How do you spell trapezoidal? Let's see if they can do it. All right. Okay, and just to make sure that we understand what we're doing, what that means is we're gonna use the trapezoidal rule to approximate what this is, okay? So basically, remember that this right here represents the area under the curve between five and seven, and I'm going to use uh, the trapezoidal rule to average that, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look, all right? So do you guys happen to remember, and this is how I remember the trapezoidal rule. Do you guys know the formula for the trapezoid or the area of a trapezoid? If not, I'm going to write it. And of course, you can always look that up, okay? But if you're taking the AP exam, they're not gonna give that to you. It's one half base one plus base two times height, okay? Now, notice that on this one, what I'm gonna have to do here is the one half, it's, I'm gonna rewrite it like this, one half height base one plus base two, All right? So that's the same thing. So this is the one we're looking for. 
All right, so on the trapezoidal rule, I'm gonna write a one half. This is delta x for you. And this is like F1. Uh, plus F2 plus, this is a part that gets confusing for people, F2 plus F3 dot dot dot. Let me just call it like F of N or whatever. So what I'm saying is the note is sort of the red here, you see how this one's double red here? So I'm just trying to kind of make you remember the formula, right? So delta X, right, delta X is gonna be found by doing uh, B minus A over N. Uh, since I see this, B is seven, A is five. And how many uh, subdivisions do they tell us? Four. Four. Great. Okay, so this right here is gonna be a one hat also. Remember, so this right here, just to make sure we're on the same page, this is delta X. Are you with me? Okay. So now, at this point, okay. I'm gonna have a six, uh, I'm gonna hate writing this, but okay. Five to seven. Let's see, five to seven, five to seven. Okay. So what I'm thinking about, guys, is that I have to kind of make sure this five right here is where I start. Okay. So then the next one, the other base of the trapezoid would be this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you not um, multiply the middle by two on these types? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me think about it for a second. Wait, it's 5.5. .5. Is that what it is? Yeah, because the reason Four it's 5.5 .5 is because delta x is one half. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? So I start with five, then I go to 5.5, .5, the next one should be six, the next one should be seven. Now, oh, okay, guys. Uh, yes, Maverick, very good. I should multiply this by two. So can I erase that a little bit? Hopefully you guys are writing in pencil. I'm in maroon pen. Hope you have one of these, buddy. I didn't write what you were writing. <laughs> oh, good. Sorry, it's my dog. Uh, okay, so yes, I do have to multiply that times two because of the middle part, because the next trapezoid, you start with the previous one and then you go to the next one, okay? So I'm not gonna over explain that because I tend to do things like that. If you have more questions about that, just go ahead and uh, after I stop recording, you can just ask me like, how did that happen? Okay, so then the next one should be six. And by the way, this bracket kind of continues, so I didn't have any room here. 6e natural log of 2 over 5, and this is going to be 6. Let's see, what's the next one? Finally, plus the very last one. Man, I'm gonna write it right. Now. 
Yeah. So here's here's another way you can check that you did this correctly. Okay. You should, even though you're supposed to have four subdivisions or four little trapezoids, you should have five uh, units or like five little items here. So one, two, three, four, five. Does that make sense? Okay. Kind of like the same idea on here. If you just kind of go back to this, right? Uh, even though this is one single trapezoid, I have to I have an extra item here, base one, base two. So that's the second one. Does that make sense what I'm saying here? Okay, so now uh, that's that for that. I think, what answer did I give you? 27 something something? Approximately, remember, an AP calculus BC, or excuse me, AB, you're going to round this to three decimal places. All right. Did it ask for units? No, it doesn't. Well, if it doesn't ask for units, I guess not worry about it. Uh, let's go to part C, or excuse me, part D. Let's see, what does part D says? Okay, so now they're asking for the correct units, all right? So on this one, they're asking us for the correct units. So think about it, right? I kind of read it up here. Remember that this was the consumption rate. Remember that word rate is like you have something like divided by something else, like miles per hour is a rate. You see what I'm saying? So on this one right here, because I integrated a rate that was the units were in billions of gallons per year. Now this is gonna be the, this, the units are gonna be billions of gallons. And because you're integrated, you're integrating each one of those things that what that means is that this is the cola consumed n billions of gallons in a two year period. All right, so in billions of gallons, that's what happened, all right? So basically when you're integrating, you're basically adding a bunch of, if you will, in this case, billions of gallons together, okay? Um, okay, let me look. Uh, same thing. Let me see if number two is very, it's equivalent. And I, I'm basically, now I'm doing all your homework. So, but I mean, I don't have you there in front of me to know how you're doing. Let me see, I accidentally got out. Hang on just a second, guys. Admit. You may say welcome back. All right, so now. Let's look at number two here. And again, Wait, what was that one? You cut out where I couldn't see. You cut out. I cut out where? Um, at the last part. Uh, D. Yeah. Sorry. This part right here. Yes. <clears throat> so again, what I was saying to everybody is that when you integrate a rate, and this was a rate, I kind of told you that earlier, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you integrate a rate, like for example, if I integrate something that's like miles per velocity, right? If I integrate a velocity, I go from miles or say meters per second to meters. So I'm integrating. It's almost like I'm multiplying, okay? It's almost okay. like I'm multiplying this times T. So instead of billions of gallons per year, I'm going to have billions of gallons. So this, this, is, this right here is the units of this, the 25.668, okay? Okay. So when you're integrating, what you have to understand is when you're integrating, you're actually adding up a bunch of billions per uh, billions of gallons together in this case. Okay. okay. So that's all I was saying about that. Let's go and look at number two real quick. Um, okay, so on A, oh, <laughs> you got... We want to write an equation. For y, okay. All right, so here's. Writing. Oh, sorry. Thank you. That's what I want to do on two A, right? Okay. 
So we want to write that. Um, let me think about this for just a second. The problem is I don't have my key in front of me, so I don't really know. I know the answer that I gave you is right. I just don't know what I did or what this person was doing because this looks insane. What are you doing? Um, okay. So kind of the same idea here. Initially, okay. So I'm gonna use this formula again, and that, that's probably why I put this here on your key. All right, remember when I integrate this function that they have there, so anytime you see this, all right, you can automatically, without doing the calculus, because you would have to do a separation of variables, and eventually you get to this, all right? So you don't have to do it every time. If you see this, you can go straight to that. All right, so I know that's the equation for y. Now, c is the initial value, all right? This is kind of like, it's very similar to what you, what you did on algebra two that, we, that I called PERT. I don't know if you remember that a long time ago where P was the initial amount and E is just T and R is the rate and T is the time. I don't know if you remember that, but anyway. So C is gonna be the initial value, which we had the, uh, at a million. And it says the, after six years, there, were, there was about half of that. I don't know what the rate is. Really, K is gonna be the rate at which you're losing oil, it looks like, or you're pumping it out, I suppose. And then T is gonna be six, okay? Now this one, it looks like I did a little bit more, right? So pay attention to this. So first, I'm gonna divide by a million. So if I divide 500,000 by a million, I get one half. So I get one half is equal to E, uh, 6k here, take the natural log on both sides. Divide both sides by six. So k is going to be equal to this, okay? And I'm guessing that's more or less what you guys did. Okay, now, but notice that the answer looks kind of weird, right? The way that I wrote y is kind of weird, like, and nobody really asked me about this, but if I were to write it exactly like they have it, this is, uh, I hate writing 1 million. Unless somebody wrote that to me as a check. So if you guys become rich and want to give me a million dollars, that'd be great. All right, anyway. So we have e to the power of k. Now k is this, natural log. We'll write it as 0 0.5 because I don't want to write too many fractions here. And... Uh, Okay, so T is T, okay? Now, let me think about it. How can I get rid of that? All right, so do me a favor. Do not copy this down, okay? So Macy, Emerson, Maverick, don't copy this down yet because I'm trying to figure out how I got to that answer. So I'm gonna write this as 10 to the six because I'm sick of writing a million. Uh, by the rules, logarithms, all right, I can rewrite that as one six. Well, actually I don't do any rules of logarithms, so I just write it as one six and P. Hmm. And now by the rules of logarithms, I can bring the one six up here. Don't know why I want to do that, but We'll see. So again, don't copy this down. It could be wrong. Okay, never mind. That does work out. So, oops, got the zero on. So yeah, this is legitimate. We're good.
Okay, so yeah, that does work. Now, do you guys see the steps that I took there? Yeah, I did the same thing. Great. Okay, I think I did do it on the notes once, didn't I? Yeah, that's where I just followed it from. Okay, yeah, so basically I took, instead of writing this over six, I just wrote it as one six times this. Then I brought this up as a power because the rules of logarithms allowed me to do that. Does that make sense? And then E and natural log right here, I, I couldn't cancel this until I did that. So E and natural log cancel and that one half comes down. And now I have one half to the power of one over six times T, which becomes this. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, great. All right, so let's go to, let's look at B. I think after that, it kind of just, it's pretty simple. Let me look at B here. What does that say? A war rate is the amount of oil decreasing when the blah, 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 blah. okay. Well, honestly, B is just a it's just an algebra problem at this point, right? So let me zoom out. So on B, you want to know uh, at what rate? Okay, so it says at what rate? When there is 600,000, so, okay. I'm gonna use the same formula. So I'm gonna start off from here. I cannot write 1 million. Oh no. I'm doing the wrong problem. Oh no. So I just thought about how uh, that doesn't work. Okay, now, uh, rate. What do you, and I've told you this before, you don't have to answer it because I know we're on video or whatever, but. Anytime you see the word rate in this case, right, it's actually talking about a derivative. Okay, so um, they all they already tell us they basically want to know. I'm going to rewrite the question: Is what is dy dt when y of t is equal to six hundred thousand? That's what they want to know. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. Do I know what K is? Did I solve for that earlier? It's right yes. there. Right? And then now the Y, it's gonna be this. Okay, so I'm gonna write a 600,000 here. Cause that's what Y is, right? We know what the, what we ended up with and well, that's pretty much it. You just put that, you basically put this in your calculator. Oh my gosh, you cannot write 600,000. All right, so then, uh, and then that's gonna give you approximately Does it ask for the units? No, but I know the units are going to be gallons per year because we're talking about a rate. You with me? Now think about it. It would make sense that the derivative is negative because I'm actually losing oil. I started with a million and now all of a sudden I'm at 600,000, right? So it would make sense for the rate to be negative. Are you with me? All right, finally, let's go over to C. And what does that say? In order not to lose money, at what time should it no longer be profitable? Well, 
Notice that on the beginning of the problem, it says that when they get to 500,000, excuse me, 50,000 gallons remaining, that's basically when it becomes unprofitable for them to keep going, okay? So in that sense, I'm gonna start off again. It says uh, fewer than, so should we do like 49 point, like, you can use that inequality if you like. You know what I mean? Uh, fewer than 50,000 gallons remaining. Um, you can do it like this. Hold on. Let me do it like this. Don't write this because I wouldn't write that myself, but basically you could write it like that. If you want it to be really accurate. You see what I'm saying, Maverick? Because this right here has yes. to be, like you have to have fewer, basically this needs to be greater than 50,000 for this to be still be profitable. Are you with me? That way you don't have to worry about putting like, because some kid then will say, well, do I write this as 49,999.999999? And I can't say no, because that would still technically would be right. Does that make sense what I'm saying? It'll be like a never ending game at that point. Uh, so anyway, so you can do it like that if you want to. I'm gonna keep it as an equal sign. And we're just gonna say that when it gets to 50,000, I stop. Okay, like I just stop instead of saying fewer than 50,000. And I see what you said that technically you were correct. Okay, not technically, you are correct. Now, uh, basically at this point, notice that this is just, a, it's just an algebra equation, right? So we just have to solve for that. So I'm gonna stop the video there. Hang on just a second.